So hi guys, welcome to Crazy Burger. So finally we have Indie Heroes Collection 1. And it feels like a lifetime ago since we actually pre-ordered it back in November last year. And after a few delays we finally have this in our hands. Now I have to say this is one of my most anticipated Evercade carts. Is it the best cart released yet? Let's find out. Okay, Indie Heroes. Now it's a collection of 14 games and they're all from indie sort of developers from across the world. And there's a great collection of platformers, RPGs, puzzlers and the like. And there's some real top games here that I'm really looking forward to actually playing on the Evercade. And without further ado, let's open up the box, have a quick look at the instruction manual. And I really can't wait. This looks terrific. Okay, so open the box. We got the lovely cartridge in the Heroes Collection 1. Now, interestingly, it's actually rated 16. I actually initially thought the one of the games in the collection, Dadis, I think it was, was rated an 18 initially. Um, obviously, it's got some horror theme into it, and there is some swearing, I believe, in Quest Arrest down the bottom here. So, we'll keep an eye on that as we go. But as you can see in the box, we have some stickers i'm not really a big fan of any of these kind of things but they are quite cool that they drop these into the the sort of collection in the box and i definitely like sort of doodle world foxy land questers obviously they're all all here oh well there's only 12 stickers so two are missing but wow lovely absolutely terrific anyway this is definitely a nice touch so let's have a look at the actual instruction manual. I know for the most part, generally don't look at the instruction manual too much, but they are really cool. It tells you a little bit more about the actual um, developers and publishers of the games. And it is quite a good read. I would definitely recommend that you go through and have a look at the creators of all the games. Um, and generally, the games are really just worked on by one person or a, a couple of people. Or some kids. I know a couple of kids actually had a hands-on sort of view out some of the games, um, like Doodle World and what's the other one? Um, the other one is, yeah there's Doodle World or this little girl had a hand in the design of the actual game, Nate and Araceli, sorry if I pronounced it wrong. Um, we've got Low Tech Games which is actually based in Scotland so and I'm really looking forward to this one, absolutely love that. We've um, got Chainbreak, which is quite cool, and a sort of running game. And Kubo 3, that's the, the name of the other game, which was designed by this little boy here, which is Dale and CJ Coop. Sorry if I say that wrong. Obviously, SJ, maybe, that sounds better. Which is obviously what the, the style of the game is based on, designed by this little guy. But amazing, I'm absolutely blown away with that. So without further ado, let's get the cart stuck in and let's get started playing these games so we've got Anguna, Chainbreak, Dedis, Deptor, Doodle World, Flea, Foxyland, Kubo, Ployd, Quest Arrest, Super Home Brawler, War, Twin Dragons, Utjusen, Ultimate Ployd Battle, Alien Cat 2 and Anguna so without further ado guys let's just get it on the big screen so we can actually see these games in better light Okay guys, here we go. Here is the first game we're going to play. is Alien Cat 2, a 16-bit puzzler. Um, only released in 2020, so last year. And I'm pretty sure this is a Mega Drive uh, game. I don't really remember Alien Cat, the first one, but here we go. We've got the sequel. Maybe that's not the point, though, of the number two. So... Kind of simple premise, your cat has, you know, crash landed in his spaceship and, you know, that usually happens. And his goldfish has survived. Amazing. But yeah, so the point of the game, I guess, is a puzzle game and you need to find pieces to repair your ship through the levels. That's the idea of the story, I guess, but let's fast forward through it. 
what we're interested really is the puzzle element. So you've got these pieces to collect. I'm guessing they're probably ship pieces or something or keys. So you press the button and it gets rid of the spikes and you can then through the portal to the next level. And then I think that helps you somehow repair your ship. And obviously you've got passwords here that you can take note and then start back in level 2 but with obviously the save states on Evercade that's pretty much a defunct um, part. So the, it starts off very easy, I mean the first levels are just about collecting the PC step on that. But this is when it gets interesting you are somehow got a, a duplicate cat. I'm not really sure what happened there and why that's happened, but there's two cats suddenly appear, but that's one of the interesting elements of this puzzle. So pretty easy to pick up, and I think that's one of the, the pleasing aspects of this game. It's very easy just to pick up and play. I guess you could maybe pick up and play a couple of levels um, while you're waiting on your tea or something. And I think that's one of the best things about Evercade, is just a, it's a simple pick up and play just for a couple of minutes maybe. And here we go, this is where things get tricky. You've got two cats that you move exactly the same time, left and right. So you need to keep an eye on that while you're sort of trying to collect the pieces or step on the buttons. And here is where things is going to get a little bit trickier. Uh -huh. I think I may have messed up already. <laughs> no! Yes, I've definitely messed up. A little bit of frustration will keep in, but I guess that's where you want to keep trying again. Right, so I need to be a little bit more weary this time. Take my time with the buttons, that's it. So we've only got one to collect. I think this is a very good game. I think I'll definitely see myself playing this um, quite frequently. If you like your puzzlers, then you're definitely going to like this. I think you'll definitely like this card if you like puzzlers too. Oh, we're definitely getting a lot more complicated, aren't we? <laughs> I mean, you get the point in that game. Definitely thumbs up from me for this one. Let's move on to the next game. Okay, the next game is Anguna Warriors of Virtue, which is the Game Boy Advance game, 32-bit, uh, and it's described as an action RPG from 2008. I think this game is a little bit um, misleading. It's obviously, it kind of looks like a almost like a Zelda style RPG but I don't think it, it doesn't have the depth of a, a Zelda game. Okay we've been captured by monsters so we need to basically escape from the dungeons here and kill all the monsters. Now there's definitely nothing long, wrong with the graphics um, but the game's very very simple there's nothing too complicated about it. You basically destroy the monsters which then opens up the door so you can escape and a lot of the game's initial part of it anyway seems to evolve around destroying the monsters and that kind of thing and obviously that's what a lot of the, the sort of dungeon style um, and Zelda was all about is maybe try to find a key to open up another door etc etc but the depth just isn't really there but it's still decent enough to play I certainly think I'll put some time into it though I just think it's maybe a little bit um, misleading and when you look at it you think oh this is a in-depth RPG which it really isn't. You've got, if you put the start button on, you've got your map, items, etc. And that's really about it. I guess you may be able to upgrade to a better sword, maybe, I don't know. But there you see we've got a red key which opens up another door further along in the level here. But you can see that one of the annoying aspects is that the enemies respawn after you've sort of left the room so I wouldn't spend too much time sort of destroying every enemy that you see unless they're obviously in your way. So this that red key that I just picked up is for this door here. Uh, and we've obviously got gold. I wonder if we'll be able to spend that gold um, in other shops or something. Anyway. So that's that little first section complete there. And Oh, also the enemies get a little bit stronger and this guy just runs in a straight line basically so he's easy enough to avoid. Green toady. I've got some... Uh, sorry, I've seen, picked up a red potion there, that was really just like a health potion. So you, you press B 
to sort of swipe and then I used the magic potion by pressing A. Pretty straightforward stuff. I think it does get a little bit boring, you need to sort of try and clear the room sometimes. It's not really totally clear if you need to clear every room to to get a key or not. So you do find yourself killing all the, the enemies anyway. When probably you don't actually need to, you just need to move on. So sort of hit detection seems a little bit off as well. Nothing in that room, that's strange. Oh. I'm, I'm sure I'll definitely spend some time playing this and, and sort of explore it in more in depth and, and see if it sort of improves or gets any better. Ooh. Got a crocodile here. Ah. <laughs> I knew I was never going to last there when I had a, a small bit of health left. Let's see where we continue at. Okay, so I guess the continue is not too bad. Not too far away, I guess. Let's see if we can go back to that level and defeat that crocodile thingy. Right, so this guy's got a fire. Oh, can't get too close, can we? Oh! See, my character moves extremely slowly. I don't think there's anything I can do here. Hmm. You know, it's not bad. I think I definitely need to spend more time on it, but I think, like I said, I just think it lacks a little bit of depth. It does a bit, bit tricky. Let's move on to the next game. Okay, the next game is Chainbreak, which is an A-bit, I guess it's a Game Boy game, from 2019. Now this game is probably one I don't really know an, an awful lot about. I don't know, it's a sort of constant runner game. Okay, here we go. So, You've got your instructions on the screen, you've got a kind of a jump, you can barely see the, the character jumping, you can see, definitely jump here, avoid the spikes, keep on running, and that's really it, so jump, run, you can always speed up using the, the uh, uh, buttons there, oh, pick up the coins, barely looks like I touch the coins there, slow down I suppose if you want to sort of avoid getting stuck with stuff, stage will end here, and that's it. I'm sure it gets a lot uh, a lot more difficult. I could say I reckon this could be fun. Challenging with your kids maybe. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> it's probably better than it actually looks. Could be challenging trying to get the best time. But unfortunately I don't actually see you. Is there a clock on here? Oh yeah, there's a, a oh you've got oxygen. No, oh, I've died. So your basically your oxygen is running out for some bizarre reason. Oh, it's really tricky to actually press that at the right time. Let's see if we can do it. Okay, not sure what the coins actually do. Oh, it's oxygen, is it? Or oh, that's that oxygen? I guess I don't know. Oh, I don't want to go slow. Oh darn! Six lives left. It's actually quite tricky. And I guess the collision detection looks a little bit off as if you actually touch the spikes there, but nothing actually happens. I don't know why I touch that. So yeah, I think some of them are oxygen pickups that sort of gives you more oxygen, obviously. And that's that. Do you know what? This ain't bad at all. I'm actually quite enjoying that. The challenge is quite good. I think generally if you mess up, it's your fault and not the game's, apart from the fact that it does look that you probably collided with the spikes and you haven't. Like there, I'm pretty sure I touched the spikes there, but no. Oh, yeah, I definitely touched them there. Touch these spikes, I know. So you could memorise the levels, I guess, and then... And that, that's obviously where you, you tend to get better when you sort of know the layout and you get better, or in my case, you just get worse. Definitely a thumbs up so far for me, I definitely like this. You know, graphically style is quite, sort of, obviously very retro, very Game boy -y. But I think that's not really the purpose. The, the, the purpose here is the, the playability of the game and the, the style. Oh, I'm going too fast there. It's hard to know if I'm, I'm going to hit the spikes here or not. And if I've jumped in, at the right time or not. So if you push forward you will run a bit faster. Obviously, time. I'm not really sure I want to go that fast. Ugh. Wow, that was fun, really fun. 
definitely two thumbs up for me for this one. It's sort of maybe a little hidden gem in amongst this lot that I was not really aware of. Very impressed so far. Let's move on. Okay, so here we go. This is one of the. This was the game that was originally rated 18, which is called Deadus, or Deadus, however you want to pronounce it. And it's obviously a Game Boy 8 bit horror style game. It's a, a kind of a RPG style game. And I can definitely say I would, I'm very intrigued by the story. Obviously, it does contain disturbing scenes, so you have been warned. Now, the premise is I believe you sort of wake up here after a nightmare, which you'll see. And you're told that the world is going to end in three days, so I guess the whole game is trying to discover why, I guess, and maybe stop it or not. So it's a kind of a, obviously it's a horror element game, and I, I think this is quite intriguing. I do like the story here. Three days from now, I will turn to raise the earth of all those who walk upon it. Oh dear. So you kind of think, is it a, a nightmare? Is it one of those things? Is it real? Did you imagine it? Soon find out. You see, it's totally Game Boy style, you can see. Very cool. Nearly you know, sort of classic style. I guess you need to investigate what's been going on and get to the bottom of it. I'm definitely going to play this one more, it's very intriguing. So this uh, sort of graphical style just reminds me of Zelda Link's Awakening so far. That classic sort of Game Boy style. Yeah, she had a weird dream too. Definitely not played this very far, so I'm kind of uh, looking forward to getting my teeth stuck into this one and finding out what the game's all about, what the story's about, and what actually happens. And if you don't really like this style of game, then I guess this is not going to be your thing. But if you do, you like your sort of Zelda and sort of the like and RPG horror style games, then I think you will really enjoy this. Oh, there's a big hole here. Oh, I thought it was a hole. It's a person. <laughs> <laughs> just the way the person was standing. I guess it's going to be exploration and finding out what's happening in the game. What's the story about? I'm not going to waste it too much because I guess everyone else that's watching will want to do the exact same thing and sort of discover what's going on. So I'll try not to talk to too many people and ruin the story. Anyway, I think I'll move on, guys. I think um, this game is not one to be played over a couple of minutes on a stream or what, but it's definitely one that's going to take a a good few hours to sort of get um, any depth to it, but it definitely intrigues me. I'm definitely very interested to see what's happening here. So a tentative thumbs up for me so far. Okay, here we change it up a little bit. We've got Debtor, which is a 16-bit, again, another Mega Drive game, I believe, platformer from 2020. So again, another really new game. Which is what I'm loving about this cart is all these relatively new games that are being released. And I definitely, please let me see another Indie Heroes collection. There's plenty of indie developers out there that would love, I guess, to get games onto their uh, arcade. So let's sort of control. So we've got it's a kind of a puzzle element where you're uh, try to repay your debt, I believe, or, or pay other people's debt. I guess your character's actually died. So we've got some bombs. I'm not sure why you would need bombs on the level. So you've got a few buttons here. Jump. Headbutt. And sort of the bombs. you got three lives, but... Say once you've actually screwed up, I don't know what you're actually supposed to do. So you, you can look around the level using the D-pad, but... This is a, a bit of a flaw with this game. Is like... Yeah, you need to hold down all the buttons to sort of reset by the looks of it. So otherwise you could just be wandering about the level forever. So don't destroy this box, whatever you do. You need it to jump to reach the other level. Oh, and then click the, the depth, I guess, which is the coin, to open up the, the sort of grate to the level. And that's it. So you've got a few different options here. You've got jump button, which is map to X. You've got a grenade bomb here for some reason. You can also, which is that one, you can also headbutt. 
There's quite a lot of controls there, I guess. Interesting. Look, progression you press start, so there's a, a little sort of control issues here and there. Right, so... Ah, okay, I need to this box to sort of push this away. You need to be careful you don't press the wrong button or you'll destroy the box you need and then you need to reset the level, which is a bit of a pain. So definitely memorise those sort of button layouts or you will be sort of replaying the same game over and over. Right, so I need... what do I need to do? I need to move this this way. Yeah, I think... Maybe. <laughs> Maybe not. I think I might have messed up. I'm not sure. Ah, <laughs> oh, right. Ah, right, okay. Right, I get it. I get it. So I've clicked that, I didn't realise that sort of went to there. Oh. I'm stuck already. So here we are. You're stuck. So to sort of destroy your character, I think you just. Yeah, hold down all four of the buttons and that will ex expire. So it's a really frustratingly tricky game. But I get I mean, I'm not saying it's a bad game. Certainly not a bad game. Just a tricky one. Yay. Yeah, there you go. It's a little bit of a test. I don't know why you would bother having actual lives. There's no reason why you couldn't just have infinite lives here. I mean, I thought your character's dead anyway, so... Who knows, right, so this is where your bombs and grenades are going to come into play. So let's grenade that. Oh, maybe it's a headbutt required. Oh, it's a headbutt. Of course, a grenade's never going to destroy that. And I've just messed up, haven't I? So that's a bit annoying, guys, if you accidentally press the wrong button, which I've done on more than one occasion. It's going to really frustrate. But don't get me wrong. A really decent game here. But the button's sort of... Is the button layout and functions are really frustrating. So let's move on to the next game. So here we have Doodle World, an 8-bit platformer made on the NES sort of platform, NES Maker, um, which I've played before and I think this is a fantastic game. Could be one of the best games on the cart, arguably, um, and I'm absolutely delighted it's here and I'm really looking forward to playing this. So let's go. It's a kind of a cutesy style platformer, sort of the doodle, sort of on the, the sort of pad there. I love the style of it, and you've got sort of normal mode, kids mode. I think kids mode just gives you more life, so I think we'll we'll sort of go with the normal mode. Yeah, it's like like you get five lives in kids mode, and three lives in normal mode. So you've got, I think, it's kind of Super Mario style where you hold down the A button, it makes you run a little bit faster and then B to jump. But interestingly, I'd really rather the, the button way it was slightly different perhaps. I, I kind of always want jump to be the A button, um, but maybe it's just a personal choice. But at the moment, there is no option to change button layout. See in the settings, there is no option. But hopefully we'll get the choice um, in the next firmware update that we see. So we click, collecting all the cranes, that splashing one makes you invincible for a very, very short period of time. And the more cranes or pencils or whatever they are you collect, um, that then, if you get to 99, that gives you an extra life. Okay, I'm t totally mucked up that bonus level. So obviously con collecting those cranes is quite important because you want to try and amass as many lives as you possibly can and get to the exit here. So each of these sort of sections here, I think there are like three or four sections in each world and it sort of ends in a typical end of level boss style fight. I absolutely love this sort of platform element and the sort of styling of it. I think the graphics are superb, even though obviously it's done in a doodle, but I think they're absolutely brilliant. The, the folks that done this, Nate Peters and, and his sort of daughter, are absolutely brilliant. They should be very proud of what they've achieved here. And I hope a lot of people enjoy this game as well, because I really do enjoy this game. It takes a lot of getting used to the, the jumping elements, but the, the controls are quite tight, so and very responsive. So I guess if you muck up, it's not really the game's fault. It's going to be like my fault. It's not the game's fault at all. Just not timed the, the jump correct at all. So the, the sort of cranes there, it's got a pointy top. You can't seem to destroy them at all. 
If you jump on their head, obviously you'll die. Unless you're invincible. Great little game. I'm, I'm really looking forward to sort of playing this more in depth. And I've played it quite a few times, but I didn't really go too far knowing that it's obviously going to be on um, Evercade, and this is where I ideally want to play it more. I think this style of game is, is just perfect for Evercade, especially the fact that it's a relatively new game and relatively unheard of, I guess. But let's hope that more people get to see this and enjoy this fantastic little platformer. Well, there you go, we got the end of level boss. It's pretty straightforward, the first one. All you really need to do is uh, jump on the, the guy's head, but I do know the, the sort of later bosses do get a lot trickier. But absolutely fun. This kind of reminds me a little bit of Sonic the Hedgehog jumping on the boss's head in the first level. But here you see the, the second sort of stages, which it kind of a, changes the graphics layout and style a little bit. It's sort of similar bosses and same idea. We've got a different sort of characters here. It looks like a, I don't know, it looks like a let, letter opener, I think. <laughs> but honestly, I hope um, everyone else sort of really enjoys this as well. Please let me know in the description what you think of all these games, what your favourite one is, and if you agree, is this one of the best carts yet? Does this include one of the best games yet? Who knows? Let's move on, guys. Okay, here we have Flea. Now, this game is another one that I really, really enjoy, and I've been playing this quite a lot uh, on the Nest Maker, and it's fantastic. I really love it. Um, and it's been made fairly recently by Low Tech Games, who are based in Dundee. And it's a constant jumping flea. So I think you play this flea called Henry the Hyperactive Flea. You've got endless sort of levels here where your job is to collect all the, the blood samples. And you can see every blood sample you collect is collected up in the corner. Now we have five. But if you sort of speak to some of the characters, they will convert them into lives. So you really have only a couple of buttons. If you press the B button, you jump smaller. Which you find out later on, but you can interact with the other characters by pressing A, and he then tells you a little bit. Please collect the blood for the Rifu fleas, and I'll give you life in return. So if you see this character in other parts of the game, if you trade in all the blood samples that you've collected, you will get um, extra lives based on that. And I'll tell you, you really, really, really need all those extra lives because you can see this game becomes extremely tricky and extremely frustrating but even said that I absolutely love this game it's very addictive and it's fun I'm going to be playing this game a lot on the arcade and try and make as much progress as I possibly can I may lose a lot of hair playing this but I think it's absolutely brilliant um, and I say well done to Low Tech Games for getting this on Evercade absolutely fantastic I love the graphical style um, and I love the, the fact it's a little bit different. You've got the, the characters always jumping. Look, you're not pressing the, the button to make the character jump. He's always jumping. So your point is to try and maneuver the characters through the level. And collect all the blood samples as you can. I'll miss one there. And avoid the spikes. So avoiding the spikes is really what it's all about. I've sort of missed more blood samples there. <laughs> It doesn't really matter, I suppose if you die through the level you just go straight back, it's just a single sort of screen level type thing. I suppose there's no time clock, you can take as long as you like on the level, it doesn't really matter. And it's all about the timing and when you manoeuvre and when you jump. I think these initial levels is really just like a, almost like a tutorial and, and what to expect later on. So you can see here's one of the characters, you speak to this character, you can trade all your lives. There you go, thanks for all your donations. Now we've got no blood left, but we've got 43 lives. And you think, wow, that's amazing, but I'll tell you, those lives will go really fast, especially when you get here <laughs> and die. I think what makes it tricky is you always want to move when you're just jumping, but you actually need to move when you're coming down, which uh, does take a little bit of getting used to. 
So I'll just be gentle with the controls and move as that. Kind of make that look easy, but um, I tell you, it's definitely not easy. So there's some characters here you need to avoid the, the worm. Because anything, basically any other character like that, you will just die instantly. And start all over again. I'll see, I'm not, I'm sort of tied within, between this game and Doodle World to what game is my most favourite game on this cart. I'm really not totally sure. Might be this one. Might be Doodle World. Not entirely sure. But I certainly hope more people get to play this and, and sort of don't dismiss it because it's really good, really addictive. Lots of fun. Quite frustrating. So here is another character where I can trade in my blood samples for more lives. And now we've got 57. That's quite important guys, don't miss that because you were going to need those lives um, going through the game. And here we hit the sort of first sort of boss, which I think is a tail that's chasing you. And it looks like when you get to the end here you realise you're actually on a dog. I believe, I think, but it's very tricky but it's fantastic, oh no, fantastic. Oh yeah, we've done it. Does look a bit strange and suspicious what that thing dangling down is, but I'm I'm pretty sure it's a tail. Probably. Guys, yeah, better move on. I could play this um, a lot longer, but I'll really move on to the rest of the games on the cart. But this is three thumbs up for me. <laughs> no, really, it's two thumbs up. Absolutely fantastic. I really love this game. Okay, next game is Foxyland, which is a 16-bit platformer. Style cut a puzzle collecting game, and um, which was also released in other platformers. You can actually play this on the PlayStation, for example. Um, but let's have a look at it on Evercade. Okay, we've got the premise your girlfriend, mother, I don't know, sister has been kidnapped, and you really have to go through the level stages collecting all the gems. I think it's got about 16 levels if I'm if I'm right. It's got lots of gems you need to click, then the, the side exit will open up. You've got a double jump, don't forget that. There is a jump, but you've got double jump as well, which is massively important. So you click the cherries as well, which will affect your end level score. Oh darn, and I missed that. I mean, it is quite tricky. I have to say, having played this on the PlayStation, I actually really like this game. The last few levels get very, very tricky and frustrating um, due to the sort of jumping mechanics um, that's trying to reach the higher levels, for example. But it still is a very good game. But I say I'm not going to spend too much more time on this because um, I have already played it quite a bit, but I definitely love this game. And again, I think it probably plays better on the handheld than it will on the PlayStation because it's not really a PlayStation style game. It's ideally better for a retro handheld like this, for sure. Okay, so here we come to Kubo 3, which again has been designed by a, a little kid and his dad. And they've done a really good job. I guess it's this is another one that's in the S sort of title from SJ Games. And it actually appears quite basic, but it's probably got a lot more involved than you probably realise. There's different gameplay elements through the game. And I believe there's obviously a, a swimming section. There's probably a, a shooting section, uh, amongst other platformy sort of styles. But you need to sort of find the different locations throughout the game. So you start off your obviously in the centre here and you've got four other locations to explore out. And I don't know why I always go left, why don't I change that up a little bit and go up? So we, generally there's not really a lot going on in the style in the levels, not really a lot to see. You're really just exploring to find the actual levels that you need to sort of manoeuvre and, and sort of collect what you need to collect. So when you look at it, the game appears to be more uh, in-depth than it actually is. 
I guess that's really the point to try and sort of make the game a little bit longer. Really. Okay, so here's one of the, the first uh, gameplay on Entry to the Skies. And all you really do is, to, obviously you're avoiding here trying maneuvering your way across here. Which is quite cool. I, th I love the sort of different gameplay styles of it, and it's not obviously not amazing graphically, but it's quite good fun. I think you have to recognise like, the background to the game to appreciate it a lot more. And I think, if I recall, there's actually boss battles as well within the game. So there's, I, I love the fact that there's different styles and elements to it. Careful. Oh, I think I've just died, haven't I? Ah, and that kind of reminds me of one of the frustrating aspects of the game is the fact that if you sort of die at any point, you will just be transported all the way back. But I suppose what I need to remember is save states. I would definitely recommend using save states as frequently as you possibly can. I, mean, I don't dislike the game, I mean, don't get me wrong, I don't dislike the game, I think it's just probably not the best game on the cart at all, but it's still pretty good. Ah, oh, what happened there? I guess I need to try and defeat this character somehow by jumping on its head. I oh, think. You can see, pretty tricky. So I obviously can't come here yet until I guess I've collected defeated the other bosses that are here. It's a little bit unclear, as I guess, what and where you're supposed to go, but I guess exploration will pay dividends. Um, okay, what's this? Ah. Entry to the cemetery. Ooh. That's ominous. So what we got here? More jumping? Ghosts. Okay, so it's kind of simple platformer element here. <laughs> oh, I'm not very good at it. So again, it's a pretty frustrating game. I'm not really sure what to make of that. And well, I'm not saying it's terrible. I'm, that's far from terrible, but it's going to take a lot of patience to want to actually play through this um, in too much depth. Interesting. I'll certainly give it more time. I think I need to sort of utilise the save states to avoid uh, frustration when playing this game. But I'm not sure. This could be one of the poorest games on the cart, so I'm really sorry to say that, guys, but it's not really blowing me away. Okay, here is Ployd, which is a kind of a, it's an adventure platformer on, I think it's a NES game, but this game is available on the Nintendo Switch as part of the sort of Ployd saga, so to speak. Um, and it Pretty interesting, let's have a go. So it's obviously set in the future here. By Nape Games. And they have another game actually on the cart which is the sort of sh shoot 'em up game. Which we'll play shortly. very Japanese in style, almost. So we need to get all the sacred disc files. So it's one of those games we need to collect everything you see again. And what I like about this is the, if you see here, the Evercade's been sort of programmed into the actual game, which is a really neat touch. Um, so you can see this has been specifically made for the Evercade, and that's probably something we haven't really seen much. Um, especially so obvious. So you've got a sort of shoot, shooting button, which is A, and your sort of jumping section as well. You can collect as much as you can. I do like that. <laughs> I'd love to see more of that sort of thing with other kids that are um, implemented within the game. Oh. Oh, damn. See, it's not bad, it's, it's tricky, it does get very frustrating quite quite hard. It's like it's a little bit like Kubo, if you sort of die 
um, through the level you will get warped right back to the start of the level which uh, is really frustrating but yeah safe states are the name of the day here again I've got some tricky jumping sort of sections oh that was lucky or fluky It's definitely the style of game I, I like, is like a platform sort of game. Whether it's a great example of that, I don't know, but um, it's not bad. There's a character here. Kinda of pointless though. I guess I need to try and avoid that. I've got only three left in my health bar, as you can see. You got five lives and what other these things I'm collecting. Ah, it's a little bit tedious. Just need to keep fire. I think the the enemies need far too much um, um, sort of firepower to actually destroy them, so it gets a little bit tedious. Oh, is that collector here? What's that I've collected? Ah, oh, is it more firepower or something? I definitely like the game, but as I say, if you get sort of if you die at any point in this level, you will go back to the start. I just don't really know why developers would put that within the game. Why not have sort of checkpoints? Obviously it doesn't really matter on the arcade you have your save states, but this still seems a bit, a bit crazy why you would do that. To be honest, this is not bad at all. It isn't bad. And you can die easy. So you can see here, if you were playing this game on an S or even on playing it on the Switch, this is the point where you probably got sent right back to the start, which you think, wow. It certainly would test the patience, that's for sure, so I'm glad it's on our kid where you can use save states. So here we have Quest Arrest, which is another sort of Game Boy RPG, but unique for um, Evercade is that this version has been colourised exclusively for Evercade, so thumbs up for that already. So interestingly is you can actually get this game for free, you can download the app. Um, but this version is completely exclusive and in colour and only on Evercade. But you can get them for free in other sort of methods. You can even download it online. But you will only get the colour version on Evercade. So far. And I have to say, it does look much better as a colour version. It certainly pops out at you. So the point of the game, I believe, is you're a, a detective and you need to solve sort of uh, puzzles and solve crimes and you can either do it badly or good, you can either obviously be a good cop or bad cop and that's your choice. I think this is definitely one of these games, a much like um, Dadis where you will need to put a lot of time in it to be able to uncover the story and the point of it. Now interesting, this game does contain some bad language so if you're sort of playing with your child or you are a child you may need to be careful there is some swearing in the game obviously it's all in text so it's not spoken swearing so that was a safe point piss up for the map it's not really the greatest or clearest at all there is it yeah even they said that <laughs> nice touch Okay, so it's your typical sort of RPG. We've got some items here, not really sure what they are, what I can do with them. Anyway, let's move on. Okay, let's speak to this guy. <laughs> I think some of this has definitely been tailored for a sort of modern audience. Okay, what's happening here? 
the heck you hit me for? Okay, this is where you get the option to be good or bad. You know, if you get non-lethal option to try and, and stop the... You can tase them, shoot them. I mean, what? Do you really want to shoot them? That's kind of boring, isn't it? Okay, so it's all about credibility. Good cop or bad cop? It's your choice, I'm not sure. I guess this could affect whatever sort of ending that you're going to get. Oh no, here we go. Shenmue's got a lot to answer for. I hate this style. Oh no, I've just pressed the wrong button. Yay, still done it anyway. So it's not, not too hard. So just as I said, there's there's definitely been a little bit of swearing on the screen. It's, it's pretty mild, I guess, but you kind of wonder why you would have bothered putting um, swearing into a sort of Game Boy style game when it. Who are who is your audience aimed at? I guess if you're releasing a retro game now, your audience is most likely going to be a mature audience anyway. Okay, so we need to find clues on this. Anyway, guys, I think we'll move on. This game deserves a lot of game game time to it, and I think um, it won't really do justice playing it a few minutes on here. Let's move on. But I definitely like this. It's pretty good. It deserves more time to it, that's for sure. Okay, next game on the list, Super Homebrew War, which is a, oh, a couple of years old, and it's another NES 8-bit platform shooter, it says. I think that's kind of misleading, to be honest, because I think the best way to describe this is it's like Super Smash Brothers on Nintendo. Except you really just jump on the character's head to sort of defeat them and get as many points as you possibly can. Now a nice touch here is the character select here. There's some characters from this cart included like Omega, Dinky which is from one of the games and if you keep going through. So you got Kubo, Blue, Dodo. Great touch, I think. Absolutely fantastic. Where will we go? Let's, in fact, let's go Kubo. Oh, that's the arena we're che checking out. I'm not really sure. Game mode, most kills, survival, chicken, king of the hill. That's going to be most kills. The point is to try and jump in the other character's head and get the most points. And the one, I think it reached, so it's up to 10. Um, first to ten is the winner. There's other things we can hit here. Oh, that's, that's what's that? What's that? What's that? Oh, it stops them. Now the problem with this, it's quite good fun to play as a single player, but I think this is going to come into its own when the VS hits. I think it'll be really fun playing against uh, another sort of human opponent, and I, I'm pretty sure you can play this as a four-player game as well. And it, it kind of, I think the best way to describe it is it's a bit like Super Smash Brothers. What does the stars do? Oh wow! I just had a power room up there. Oh, what have I got? What? 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 That was like swap, swapping positions. So it's different sort of arenas, you obviously, because you've seen it start there. Oh, that's what I want. I want that. I want that. Yay! You press the A button to unleash your special power there. Because I think on your own playing this, um, it may get a little bit dull, a little bit repetitive perhaps. Anyway, it's not bad. I think um, this will definitely be better played against human comp opponents and on the VS later in the year. Um, but I'm not really sure I'm going to play an awful lot of this. So, next game, Twin Dragons, which is another NES 8-bit platformer. It's a few years old. Um, It's from Broke Studio, so just stick to normal. Not really sure what the premise is here, to be honest. I think it's obviously quite obvious there's twin dragons. There's what you have to go and rescue one of them. So one of them have been transported to different parts of the the world. They looked at there, but here we go. We've got the, the green dragon. Was it Dinky? I think so. We've got firepower and you got a jump button, which is quite good. Got three lives here, three hearts. 
Let me pick up these peppers. It's not bad. I definitely like myself a platformer. Oh, I'll definitely welcome more platforming games. I just need to be more patient. I think that's my problem when I'm playing games. I have zero patience. So it took three hits to kill the dragonfly there. I think it's two hits for this one. Yeah. I guess just memorising that and knowing what you're supposed to do. Oh my god. the game but it's good it is quite good it's very playable I feel a little bit sort of frustrating and tricky at times my problem is I really am not the most patient person when playing games it's all about speed so I guess this is a mid-level checkpoint oh that's the actual end of the end of the level okay I believe there's actually a uh, sort of end of level bosses as well I think I'll definitely be playing a little bit more of this. I don't think it's amazing, but it's definitely fun and playable. Okay, there's a, a checkpoint right in the middle there, which I've seen, which is good. Oh, you can't even defeat them. Well, there's an extra life there. Maybe just zoom through the level quickly. <laughs> oh. Moving platforms. Ah, oh, I'm gonna die. Anyway, guys, I think we'll move on to the next game. It's a pretty decent game. It's kind of not amazing, but it's, it's playable. Okay, last game on the cart is Etrusan Ultimate Ployd Battle, which is another game from Nape Games in the Ployd Saga. Um, this is an 8 bit shoot em up. I guess it's another NES game. Um, not my favourite style of game, shoot em ups. So I've obviously mentioned that loads of times before. I'm not very good at them. Oh, wow, well, I died already. <laughs> you only get one life? Are you serious? Oh, right, okay, I need to collect these things. So, I still think that there's not a, a lot of response in the, the sort of the way the ship maneuvers. It may just me. Definitely, it seems as if you're flying in treacle almost. Huh. What? So I'm probably the last person you want to ask if um, about a shoot 'em up. I'm not really sure this is a great example of it to be honest. Okay, I guess if you like your shoot map, you may get more out of this than and then I will. Oh, okay. I get the point, I guess. A little bit repetitive. And avoid the firepower. But it doesn't seem to be great maneuverability in the actual ship, you know, it doesn't doesn't respond great, which hmm. So I'm not really sure about that one at all. So guys, that's the Indie Heroes Collection um, one. So I think this is what's best for Evercade. I mean, there's a really good selection on this cart. Is it the best cart yet? I mean, it's right up there with Mega Cats and sort of the Oliver Twins Collection and the Pico Collection one um, as one of the best carts. There's a great selection of games here. Admittedly, you could probably get some of these games for free, but if you look at some of the other games on the cart, there's some exclusives here. Um, it's great value, I think, overall. And there's some really top titles. I think I'm going to be spending a lot of time in the next coming weeks and maybe even months playing some of these games. So guys, please add some comments. Let me know what you think. Is this the best cart yet? Is it one of your favourites? Or do you absolutely hate it? I definitely think there's some games here on this cart that deserve to be some of the top games available for Evercade. I love the fact that there's sort of styles here that have been specifically made and programmed for the Evercade. 
How many times do you think we'll be dying in this game? <laughs> what a fantastic little game. Great little cart. I'm really loving it. I'm looking forward to spending a lot more time on this cart. And I hope you enjoy it too, guys. Please like and subscribe, and we'll catch you again next time. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.